So this morning we're going to look at something that we're going to talk about something. That, and, and me and my husband was talking this morning. We said, you know what, this is really kind of deep. And you're going to see what I, I mean. Uh, one, one of my weaknesses, I'll say, is that I, I have this level of insecurity. I, I know I stand up here all the time, but, but you know, and, I, and, I, and I'm shy, really. You know, and some people say, what? But I am. I really am. I'm shy, and I have this level of insecurity. And, and when I try to, to, to uh, diagnose myself, uh, what I what I what I tr- attribute a lot of it to is, and you guys heard, have heard my story. Um, after 58 years, I finally met my biological father. Okay, and so and so I know, and I, we've been talking about families, and this is a this is good because um, fathers and mothers, what you don't realize when when you having issues with each other, it affects the children. So me not ever knowing who my biological father was, it caused a lot of insecurity. Um, I, I felt like I didn't matter, you know, and, and things like that. So, so I have this weakness, amen, and, and, and it's insecurity. And so I'm sure that some of you have some form of weakness, amen. It might not be insecurity. Come on. Come on, come on, let's be real. It might not be insecurity. Some of our weaknesses can be sickness. Some of it can be the inability to bear our burdens, bear our trials. And I know this is family day, so children are in here. Some of it, some of these children are going to school and they have insecurities. They're being bullied. Uh, We have weaknesses. Amen. And sometimes they're hard to deal with and hard to get over and hard to get past. Amen. But, but what God wants us to know is, listen, there's power in our weakness. Now, that's deep. So say it with me. There's power in weakness. Say it again. There's power in weakness. That's good news. That's good news. If you're a believer, if you're a bought, blood-bought believer, we have the power inside of us to, to, to bear the punches of, of our insecurities that, or of our weaknesses that seem to follow us through our life. So let's go. Let, let's see what God has got to say about this. We're going to look at a, a, a man by the name of Paul. And we're going to look at this letter that he wrote to a church that he founded and he pastored in a city called Corinth. One thing about Corinth, it was a big city. It was a, a, a blustering, bubbling city. And there was a lot of uh, stuff going on. They compare it to the, the um, Las Vegas of today. But when you think about all the stuff that's going on, and even around our city, we can compare it to maybe Denver. We got a lot of stuff going on with the marijuana law. You know, y'all know. And so, so this church had a lot going on. And, and, and so he founded and he, and he uh, pastored and built this church. And uh, it was mostly made up of Gentiles, which are non-Jews. And so I'm sure they brought to the church a lot of this idolatry and, and things that they have had to live with. So this church gave Paul more trouble than any of the other churches. Amen. Y'all know how we do. Y'all know, church, I know it's 2018, but we give, we give our pastors and preachers some trouble. Amen. And so they were, so while he would write them and address the things that they were dealing with, they weren't that spiritually mature. And there was a, there was a, there's a group that came into the church that said they were apostles. And so they began to talk Paul down and saying that, that his love for the church and, and the way he handled the church made him look weak. Made him look weak. And they said he was a false apostle. So in this passage, Paul's spending a lot of time defending his call, defending his apostleship, defending his authority. Now, we have to understand he wasn't being defensive. He was just defending 
And what he wanted them to know was that a true apostle, because they said he was a false, a true apostle suffers. Yeah, a, a, a true apostle has some form of weaknesses. And so what he began to do was, he said, I'm not going to talk about my accomplishments. I, I'm going to brag about my weaknesses. So he lists all of his weaknesses. He lists them all. And we're going to look at, at, at one of his uh, uh, story experiences that showed a great weakness. Okay, and then what he ends up saying is, and this is the part that me and my husband said is, is deep. It said, he said, when I am weak, then I am strong. Oh, come on, do you believe that? That's deep, ain't it? When I am weak, then I am strong. I don't know how that can be. When I got here this morning, I was so nervous, I, I couldn't even hardly talk because of my insecurities. But when I am weak then I am strong. And you're going to see why. Turn to 2 Corinthians and put the first, oh, it's already up there. Well, amen. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, chapter 12. So I'm going to read this passage and, and we're going to see what God is going to say about how our weakness can be powerful. Hmm, I want to know. Beginning at verse 2, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, but God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. Though, if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So to keep me from being from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, guess what? A thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace, is sufficient for you. For guess what? For my power is made perfect in weakness. Oh, come on, somebody. That's good news. That's good news. Therefore, Paul says, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content now, that's deep. For the sake of Christ, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. Why, Paul? Because when I'm weak, then I am strong. Yeah, the power of weakness. You see, what this passage is, is saying to me is that we have in something inside of us that helps us endure what's happening outside of us. All right? The power of weakness. Go to my second slide. The power of weakness. So, how is weakness powerful? Weakness is powerful because it prepares us for our purpose. Weakness is powerful because it prepares us for our purpose. Let's go back to verse 7. Paul says, so to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me to keep me from becoming conceited. So he's talking about this experience he had when he was taken up 
into heaven. And is he said the third heaven? I I I don't know. I didn't study this. Apparently, there's different levels. But in the presence, in the dwelling place of God, Paul was taken there. He said, I don't know if I was in my body or outside of my body, but I know I was there and I heard some things that I can't even tell you about. Now, that's something to brag about. Amen. That's something to be, to be uh, proud about. And so he said, but to keep me from being proud and conceited and full of myself, he said, I was given this thorn in my flesh. So he was given a specific weakness, amen, to keep him humbled before man and before God. Because weakness is powerful because it prepares us for our purpose. So he needed to be humbled, and he was given this thorn in the flesh. So again, let's look at our weaknesses again. It could be sickness. It could be the, our health. It could be the ability to, to, to deal with stuff. It could be the ability to not to be able to, the inability to bear with trials and tribulations and problems and situations and, and all kinds of stuff. We have a proclivity of, to sin. It could be a, a, a something, some form of sin that we have problems overcoming and dealing with. Those are our weaknesses. So this thorn in the flesh, we, we really don't know what it was. I know people spend a lot of time trying to figure it out, but we don't know what it was. All right, we don't know. And maybe when we get to heaven, the Lord will let us know what it was. And so I'm kind of glad he didn't tell us so that we don't try to compare. You know, so, so I can say whatever my weakness is, that's my thorn in my flesh. And Paul said it was tormenting him. So, so here's the interesting thing. He said this thorn in my flesh, it was given to me. Given in the passive voice means it was someone else gave it to him. And they call it a divine passive. So basically God God gave me this thorn, and then he allowed Satan to harass, to buffet me in some translations, to torment me. So I really didn't know what that meant, really. But do you know it means to beat, to violently slap, huh? To pummel. To whip, that's what that means. Have you ever been in a situation and maybe you didn't receive a physical beating, but you felt beat up, beat down, pummeled? Amen? Amen? I don't know about you, but I felt that. So Paul is saying that God has permitted Satan to harass him to torment him, to, to beat him, or whatever it was, with this thorn. And then he was going to take Paul and use him to build up his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Weakness is powerful because it prepares us for our purposes. These punches, they're meant to form and to shape us to get us ready for kingdom building. It keeps us grounded so we're not exalted. Amen. If I wasn't insecure, maybe because I'm in front of people all the time, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'd be exalted. I don't know. But this thing follows me. It torments me. But God said, it's so that I can get the glory, and I'm going to take that and I'm going to use it for the upbuilding of my kingdom. It prepares us for our purpose in him. And I, yesterday, Patrick and I was talking about that, and he was like, Karen, that don't make no sense. And I said, well, honey, I would think that, I would look at you and think that your thorn might be that for the last five years, you've been on chemo. 
to treat the cancer that is not curable. And I said, I think God is using it to prepare you for his purpose. He said, well, that don't make no sense because I don't want it. I don't like it. I don't like how it makes me feel. I, I, I'm sick. I said, well, don't you get up every morning and go to work? And then, and then when you leave there, you go to the other job. And then after that, you go to your third job after taking chemo. And then you come here on Saturdays and you meet with the men and you, and you deek. You do your deacon duties. See, he's using And I said, how do you do that? He said, by the grace of God. <laughs> See, it prepares us. Our weaknesses prepares us. Okay? And so I said, and then when people look at you and they see you going on, pressing in, with that thorn tormenting you, they don't know when you get home, you're, you're laying down and you're, you, you can't sleep all night by looking at him. You, he don't look like what he's going through. Amen. <laughs> see, see, God puts in us something so that we can deal with what's going on around us, the power of our weakness. Yeah. Hallelujah. I could go on and on, but I, I think I just better stop right there. <laughs> the power of weakness is powerful because it prepares us for our purpose. And see, he, he, he begins to disciple now. He disciples his children. He, he goes to the, the, the hospital, the cancer center, and, they, and with a smile. And the doctor says, your blood work is good. He said, that's because there's power in the blood and I'm healed. Amen. It prepares us for our purpose. So I ran across this illustration, and I, and I thought it was fitting. It says, and I think we, at least the women, we can relate. It says, the reason a woman can endure the pain of childbirth is because there's something good coming down the pike. Right? She endures the pain because she knows it'll be worth it in the end. It'll be worth it when she celebrates the birth of her new child. Amen. You not y'all know the joy we feel when we see them, but you also know the suffering that we've gone through to get them here. The labor, the pain, the hurt, the pushing, the cutting, all of that that we go through. But it, it is in the weakness, in that weakness that God births something new, something joyful. And so the mother becomes the weak vehicle, the weak vehicle through which something is birthed. And so my next slide, my next slide, weakness is powerful because it becomes the vehicle that provides us with what we need to endure it. Oh, that's deep right there. Come on, y'all. That's deep. Weakness is powerful because it becomes the vehicle that provides us with what we need to endure. So Paul said in verse 8, three times, and I don't know if it was consecutive, it could have been over some years, I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. It's a weakness. He didn't want it. But he said to me, and it's in red, so it was Jesus, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Oh, come on, y'all. It's a process. It's a process. I'm not going to lie and say that it's all good. It's a process. So Paul, what he's saying is that I've learned or I'm learning to deal with this thorn. It's not going to hamper the calling on his life. And he's making do with it because of the grace that he received through Jesus Christ, the power of Christ. His weakness becomes the vehicle by which God's grace and God's power is manifested. There's power in weakness. There's power in weakness. 
And so Jesus said, my grace, that, that unmerited favor. Paul uses grace so much in his writings. And so I believe it's much more than him saying unmerited favor. It's unearned, un, unbought gift of salvation. And we know what comes with salvation. The Holy Spirit, Acts 1 says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So once we've turned over our lives to Christ, we are given power. We're given Holy Ghost power. This grace that, that, that Jesus said, it's, it's enough. It's sufficient. It's sufficient. And so it had to have been tough on Paul, this thorn that he's carrying around. It had to have been tough because it called on, he called on the Lord. And this, this is free. When I was studying this passage, I noticed when Paul was talking about God, he said God. When he's talking about Jesus, he said Christ. But this one particular verse, he says, Lord. I called on the Lord. And here's why it's interesting to me. Because uh, this city is, is out of Rome. And in, in the Rome, at, at the time, Rome, uh, if you called anybody other than their emperor or their Caesar, Lord, it was against the law. It was not permitted. So Paul is saying, I asked the Lord. Lord means master. It means the one in power. So it's free because it, it was interesting to me that he would let it be known that I asked the one who's really in power to do something about my weakness. Amen. The Lord of lords and the king of kings, the Christ Jesus, to do something about this thorn. So the Lord represented someone in power. And he's saying, but my grace, I, I, I've already given it to you. My grace is sufficient. That word grace, in the, in the Greek, it's archaeo. Archaeo. It means to possess an unfailing strength. I know a lot of times we say it's enough, but it's more deeper than that. Sufficient means that we're able to endure we're able to deal with. So he's saying, my grace gives you the ability to endure. The power to endure. Not always overcome it, but endure it. Amen? So he's saying, my grace is sufficient. And here's what's so interesting. He said it in the present tense. So that means it's continual, ongoing. There's no end. His grace was sufficient yesterday. It's sufficient today. It's sufficient tomorrow. And so that, that thorn that Paul was given that was there to buffet him, that, that was also in the present tense too. So, so uh, it, it was a habitual tormenting. And so God counters that with his grace, and he says, I'm going to give you the power all the time to endure, even when you don't feel me, even when you don't see me, even when you get the bad doctor's report, even when this or that is going on. My grace is right there to give you the power to endure. It's a, it's a very present help, amen, in the time of trouble. Yes, it is. So the Lord told Paul that, that he placed in him a gift that will enable him to bear or endure his weakness. So that makes our weakness a vehicle for this power. It does, y'all. It does. Power. Power is strength. It's a ability. It's a divine energy. It has to be divine in order to endure it. It's a divine energy. It gives us the ability to carry out certain functions. Luke said it like this. 
behold, I have given you authority or power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. We have that living inside of us, the power to, to endure, to tread on, and to overcome if needed. This power that God gives is a redeeming power. It preserves us. It's the same power that, that he's going to use when we transition from life to death to life. In our glorification, this power, it's life-saving. This power, it's life-transforming power. It's God's power, and he tells Paul that um, it's sufficient for you, and, and, it's, and it's fully manifested in you. It's made complete in your weakness. So what I've given you is all you need to endure. Amen. So Paul has all he needs. Now some of us raised our hand, nodded our head, acknowledged that we do have some weaknesses. So whatever your thorn is, here's what I'm going to suggest, is that you admit it. Because sometimes that's hard to do. You know, to tell somebody you, you're, you're this or you have that. You know, I know sometimes I'll look at Patrick and he'll say, why do you ask me that how I feel? Go on and admit it, dude. Admit it. <laughs> admit your weakness. <laughs> Go on and admit it. So, so write it down. Admit what it is. And then, then do what Paul did. Ask God to relieve you from it. Because... Yeah, and that way you can get the right answer. You'll know if he's going to say yes or no, all right? Sometimes we just call, hold on and moan about stuff, and we haven't even went to God about it. He might want to use it. He might want to use it for his glory. Who knows? So write it that dig down. Acknowledge it. Admit that you have it and ask God for relief. And then believe in his sustaining power. So your, your thorn just might be the vehicle for God's grace so that he can get the glory, the power of weakness. We have inside of us something to help us to endure what is happening around us and on the outside of us, the power of weakness. And turn to my next slide. Weakness. So here's the next thing I'm going to say about weakness is that it, it, it causes, uh, it's powerful because it causes us to, to, to notice or, or have an awareness of the active presence of Jesus. That's deep, y'all. Come on with me. That's deep. Weakness is powerful because it is the awareness of the active presence of Jesus. 9b, Paul says this, Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me, may live in me, may live within me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Weakness is powerful because it, it, it is the awareness of the active presence of Jesus. So Paul is saying the power of Christ has descended upon me and it's teaching me how to live. It lives in me. It works within me. And it works through me. It's a divine power. And it's magnified by our human weaknesses. See, our weaknesses, when we allow God's power to work through us, they begin to fade back while Christ's power begins to come forward. And so when people look at you, they don't see your weakness. They see the power of, of God's grace 
coming through. Amen. When you look at him, you don't see his cancer. You don't see his chemo. You see the power of God working through him. Amen. When you look at me, you don't know that I'm insecure and shy. You see the power of the Holy Spirit coming through. Amen. When we look at you, we don't see your weaknesses. We don't see your issues and your problems. We're not trying to be nosy. We just want to, we just see the power of God, the active power of God coming through. When we look at Troy, we don't know that he was just in ICU because he was, and he was weak and laying in the hospital bed. He walked in here this morning. I said, how do you feel? He said, I feel pretty good with these. He, it's the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit within him. Yeah, the power of God. He gives us power to walk right. He gives us power to talk right. He gives us power to live right. He gives us power to love right. He gives power for us to do right. <laughs> Amen. He gives us power to endure. He gives us power to stand. He gives us power to sit when we need to. He gives us power to withstand. He gives us power to press on. He gives us power to press in. He gives us power to get up. He gives us power to run on. He gives us power to press forward. He gives us power to live. He gives us power to teach. He gives us power to preach. He gives us power to move. He gives us power not to move. He gives us power to talk. He gives us power to shut up when we need to. He gives us power. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power, Holy Ghost power, that lives within. Yeah, the, 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 the songwriter said, and, and I might be just adding my own, he says, what, what is it that, that makes me do right? It is the power of, the, of Jesus within me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praises. And so, and so let's turn to the last screen because I have a takeaway. Because we just don't want to leave here feeling good about the power. Because when we leave here, guess what? Then weaknesses are still there. They're still there. So what's so powerful about our weaknesses one, it prepares us for our purpose. Two, it becomes a provision for us to endure. Three, it makes us aware of the presence of Jesus. And here's the challenge, and I gave it to you earlier. Admit your thorn. Write it down. Admit it. Face it. Pray for relief like Paul did. Trust that God will answer. And then believe in his sustaining power. Believe in his sustaining power. Amen. And as we close, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. Would, imagine what would happen in our community and in our church and in your home and on your job and at the schools if every believer would tap into what we have inside of us to help us endure what's going on outside of us. Because God wants to use us to advance his kingdom. And he uses he uses filthy rags like you and I. And we can't get right unless we allow. We ain't going to get right. He forms and shapes us so that he can work through us. Sometimes just as we are, he can't work through us. And so he permits this thorn to knock us around, to shape us to form us so that he could use us, so that he could get the glory. Because we say this all the time, it's not about you and me. See, this old world is temporarily, this body is temp temporal. Yeah, we got a place that's not even made by hands. <laughs> yeah, we got a kingdom and a mansion waiting. And so we don't want to leave nobody behind. And it is the will of God that no one should perish. And so in order to get his word, I guess what he does, he uses you and me, our hands, our feet, our voices, our heart. And so that thing, that thorn, might 
be the vehicle that he wants to use for a purpose or a will for his plan so that somebody would give their life to Christ. The power of weakness. The power of weakness. So if there's anybody that, that just wants prayer, because sometimes this stuff can be heavy and deep and hard and tough. If you need some prayer, come on down. Come on down. Prayer changes. And if it don't change your situation, it might change how you look at it. Might give you clear answer. Come on down. Yeah, there's power in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah.